Welcome back! Uh, we're sure of doing exciting start. We've already killed one replicant, and since we did so, we don't have to worry about him showing up here, which is where he usually shows up. If you don't catch him in the alley... Oh, one thing I actually forgot to mention... Your floor number, please. The, uh, we saw a bum in the uh, alley, and I didn't stop to talk to him because I wanted to catch Zubin. But if you do talk to him, like I said, um, he points you in the r direction of Zubin. But you can kill the bum and jump him in the dumpster. It doesn't make uh, all that much difference. Uh, he does appear later in the game if you don't kill him. Um, but it doesn't really affect the outcome of the game, <laughs> even though you kill the human. Apparently nobody ever finds out. <laughs> kind of a fun thing that you can do that. Uh, but weird. I wonder if this is the same apartment building where Deckard lives. Kind of looks apartments. the same. We can go to our own apartments, or the roof where we just came from, or the ground floor. Uh, ground floor. Let's look at the ground floor. Before going to the apartment. I just feel like doing it. And there's not much here. Uh, we can't actually go anywhere right now. Later we will be able to go to the police station on foot from here, as well as some other places. Your floor number, please. But right now is a fairly pointless location. McCoy, 88F. So 88. let's head to our apartment. Thank you. I lived with the best gal I'd ever seen. She was two now and full of life and love. She'd cost me about a year's salary, but she was worth it. It was good to have someone warm nearby after completing a dirty job. And the retirement swag from this case would go toward getting her a partner. Yes, it's our dog, Maggie. Maggie, come here, girl. An intelligent conversation with our dog. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. Anyway, um... Apparently we have a real dog, which, like I said, is... Uh, real animals are rare, so that must have been expensive. In the novel, actually, having an animal is considered sort of uh, required socially. Because it shows your empathic skills, which is the main thing that puts uh, uh, humans apart from replicants. So almost everyone in the... Uh, novels has an animal, and if you can't afford a real one, well, you'd better get a, a fake animal and pretend it's real. Uh, uh, better hope that the neighbors don't find out. Um, it's also one of the core tenets of Mercerism, the uh, religion used in the novels, although that, of in the novel, there's only one. Um, although that does not show up in the movie or game at all. We have an Esper unit here, for some reason. Uh, but like I thought, the photograph of Zubin is not enhanceable. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else here, but we can go into the back. And McCoy decides to, by himself, walk outside. Zubin was the first Nexus 6 I'd come up against. There was something in his eyes, an almost primordial desire to live. Most of the 3s, 4s, and 5s I'd seen would just give up when you had them. But these 6s, they were a whole other breed. Yeah, it definitely seems like uh, that. If, I mean, in the movie, Roy Batty and his crew were desperate to find out a way to extend their lives. You can sort of see their point of view. I mean, I wouldn't like being told that I only live for four years. Nice view, by the way. Makes the view from my apartment seem uh, amazing. Nothing else here, it's just a scenic view. Um, and it looks like we have a message. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath. My wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told my wrath. My wrath did grow. Crank calls were a dime a dozen in this city, and I'd had my share. Still, this guy sounded more like an English teacher than the average scumbag. If I'd been more awake, 
The message might have spooked me. Erase and reset. That was weird, because I recognize that voice. It's uh, the guy we have in the photograph, one of the perpetrators from the animal murder. How the hell did he get our number? Does he know we're on this case? Also, we can take Portrait a Portrait of the sleep deprived. Ooh, cutscene. Floating right. doggies. Kingston <laughs> Kitchen. Oh, yes, right. Hold on. Is this what the gravity be like on Mars? Oh, no. It's about a third of what we got here on Terra. Real company. How about turning that dial, okay? When I say... Oh! <laughs> Please, can you control your rat? I'll have you know that Ricky's a purebred chihuahua, and he's totally real. Things going good at Tyrell Corporation? Boring, boring. Old man Tyrell's been on a Wagner kick lately. He never shuts up. You also do outside work? Sweetie, I never go outside. It's bad for the glands. How about Nexus 6? You know a lot about them? I think you should be going now. <laughs> Understand the good, it holds deep meaning for me now. Where be your research on Nexus 6? I need test studies, contacts, the works. Only simulator, transport, terrestrial gravity. <laughs> One more minute, you be swallowing this explosive. Three more minutes? They be hosing you off the true life building across town. No, I swear. I don't have anything. If I did, I'd give it to you. My people sick and dying. You tell me something. Talk to Dr. Tyrell. Tell me something I don't know. The organ designers, uh, Maraji, Hannibal Chu, Luther and Lance, they're closer to him than I am. Where? DNA Row. They're all working down on DNA Row. You one miserable package man. No! No, please, don't! That was Good interesting. Up. Hope you aren't camped out there with a bottle of tequila. Oh, very funny. Early bird slays the worm, McCoy. Don't worry, I'm up, Lieutenant. What's the buzz? One of Tyrell's employees got his fat face splattered all over the marble interior of the Tyrell building. Inside? That's right. But we also got a sweet little break on it. Tyrell's surveillance system recorded the whole shebang. Beautiful. How many perps? Just one. I don't know if it's related to the Runcitter deal or not. Tyrell security will have the disc for you when you get there. You'll be good, killer. I don't know if it's related to the Runster deal either, but um, that Rastafarian might have been the guy uh, from the Tyrell bombing that Crystal was investigating. So it's definitely interesting to check out. We have TV. Violent street crime in the city rose again last year by a whopping 26%, according to the latest figures from the Department of Justice. Governor Kolvig attributed the change to the dramatic increase in... That's the same thing as uh, we heard in the police station earlier. Anyway, uh, McCoy, of course, doesn't know yet that it's the Rastafarian, so we'd better go to uh, Tyrell and find out. Let's here give you him... go, baby. Dinner time. <laughs> Let's give our dog a treat. Maggie, come here, girl. I'm more of a cat person, but uh, I do also like dogs, especially like this one, big ones. Um, all right, let's Your go and do our number, job. Please. We are now um, in, although the game doesn't actually state it that much, we're now in Act 2, which you can tell... Um, Wait, no, not here. Which you can tell if you look at your save games, because we now have autosave start of Act 2. 
once we saw the cutscene of the guy getting uh, blown up, basically, the new act started. You can usually tell when a new act starts, because there's a cutscene. Alright, let's see what we can uh, dig up about that bombing, and if it has anything to do with our current case. So, we've got some new locations, well, one new location, the Tyrell building. Another location you will recognize from the movie, also the only nice place in town. McCoy, LPD. Uh, just a minute. Where do I go? Grav test on the east wing, 66th floor. Uh, here's the footage from the security cameras. You get a pretty good look at the man's face. How'd he get past you guys? He pretended to be a delivery man. Dr. Eisendoller ordered in a lot, so it didn't seem unusual. All the trick in the book. I may have more questions for you later on. Yes, sir. And they always fall for it, the delivery guy routine. We've used it ourselves uh, in a game or two. Nice looking place. Too bad about the rain, but that's sort of inevitable. Interesting, in the novel, um, the Tyrell Corporation is actually called the Rosen Corporation. Although the owner is still called Eldon, just Eldon Rosen instead of Eldon Tyrell. And they're also located in Seattle, not in uh, Los Angeles. Then again, the whole uh, novel is set in San Francisco, not in Los Angeles. So that's a big difference anyway. Let's see if this guy knows anything else. One more thing. I've told you everything I know, Detective. I gotta work. These monitors don't watch themselves. Yeah, it's a tough gig. One more thing? Who do you think you are, Lieutenant Colombo? Well, at least we got the video disc. One of Tyrell's oh, and the phone call. Of course, we'll need to get back to an Esper, either the one in our apartment or the one at the police station, in order to get info from that. For now, let's go and check out that crime scene. Um, some things you can find here as well. The earring was shaped like an insect. I didn't know much about jewelry, but it looked like junk to me. Like the cheap crap sold at the stands and shops of Animoid Row. A dragonfly earring. That's interesting because Lucy had a dragonfly anklet we saw in the photograph. The earring was shaped like an insect. I didn't know much about Um... I think sometimes you can find a leaflet here as well, but it doesn't look like there is one right now. We can, however, look at the computer. Someone had tried to access a bunch of protected files on the Tyrell network and failed. Not just once, but a dozen times. Tyrell engineers might forget their passwords, but what would the GravLab boys need with replicant DNA sequences and incept dates? It sounds to me like these replicants are after the same thing that Roy Batty and his group in the movie were after. Longer life. Like I said, uh, you can't really blame them for that. Well, we'll check inside and um, see what the mess is like after that explosion in the next video.